Well, we have a little over a week, as we've been talking about, before the Super Committee hits its deadline to reach an agreement to cut the deficit by $1.5 trillion. That's the mandate. Joining me now to talk about the deficit reduction negotiations and more is Evercore Partners and founder and chairman Roger Altman. He's a former deputy treasury secretary, as you know, under President Bill Clinton. Roger, it is always a pleasure to have you in the Hi, studio man. here. Right. Okay, so a little bit, we're about nine days away, right, from this November 23rd deadline. Are we going to get a deal? My own expectations are low, uh, uh, and I'll, every indication I, I see suggests that they should be low. Uh, it's unfortunate, but uh, uh, I think if there, if there was progress being made, at least big progress, we would see evidence of it, mm. leaks and other evidence. Uh, there isn't much of that. Uh, I have my fingers crossed like everybody else, and there are many, many possible variations on an outcome, including, by the way, some form of delay. Right. The speculation, for example, you set a revenue target, but you don't detail any of it. What do you make of that, by the way? Well, I think they're looking for any way to avoid an abject failure. Uh, you know, any way to avoid uh, having just simply standing up and saying, we can't do it. Uh, they're concerned about the impacts of that on a possible additional downgrade. They're concerned about the impacts of that on financial markets and just a statement of Washington dysfunctionality mm -hmm. at a time when, Congress, uh, when public appraisal of Washington is, uh, uh, I think, about 9%. And as somebody joked to me recently, 9% means that only uh, blood relatives and paid staffers are supporting Congress. So <laughs> uh, they have, they're in a tough spot. Well, when you say low, so we're talking, you think what? less than 50 percent chance that they're going to come together with a deal then, right? Of course, no one really knows, Betty, but that would be my sense, yes. Okay, so, and if there were, if the, if the chances are, you know, in your view, the chances are that low, and the possibility that we may not get a deal, though, Roger, this time around, would it have as big of an impact on the markets as it may have back in the summer when we were talking about all of this? Well, two points. First of all, uh, I don't think they're going to announce Good morning, folks. We can't do it. I think they're going to. There'll be some papering over, in some form or other, okay. of of the outcome. So, uh, a delay, setting broad goals. Uh, I think there'll be something other than announced failure. Mm -hmm. Number two, no, I don't think the market impact will be uh, very big because I think market expectations also, Betty, are extremely low. Right. Uh, Roger, let me just play for you something that you had said to us back in September when certainly there were different circumstances uh, around the deficit negotiations, but also overall in the economy. I just want to play for this for you. All the recent economic data, uh, almost without exception, is so downbeat, whether it's jobless claims, whether it's housing starts, uh, whether it's retail sales, whether it's consumer confidence, they're all trending like this. And so I think we're on the edge of slipping back into negative territory. Now, Roger, obviously things have changed since September, but are we still on this edge or not? Well, I would say yes. Uh, do I think we're going to tip into negative territory uh, and, and a, a renewed recession? No, I don't. But are we facing uh, growth, which most people would say is below the uh, amount necessary to get this economy, especially labor market conditions, improving? Right. I would say uh, that's, what, that's where we are. In other words, a, a zone of stagnation, 1% to 2% growth, maybe 2%, uh, and, and sort of sawtooth growth, and uh, not enough growth to uh, reduce unemployment or mm -hmm. otherwise uh, improve, uh, improve any aspect of labor markets, and that's the problem. Now, Roger, I want to stay with Europe here because now you've got the technocrats coming in. Is that going to make any difference? Well, let's, let's step back. Uh, I think, unfortunately, it's hard to be optimistic about Europe right now because we still don't have the details on how the European Financial Stability Fund mm -hmm. would be expanded. We don't have the details uh, on how the banks would be recapitalized. And the, in, in the interim, the epicenter has shifted from Greece, which is the size of roughly Delaware, to Italy, which is the eighth largest economy in the world and with 2.6 trillion of national debt. Right. And the crisis, in effect, is getting more serious, but the solutions are not moving forward. So I must say, I'm, I'm really quite concerned. Uh, I've always been concerned about Europe, but I mean, I think there's a mo this is a moment where you, you really do feel alarmed. Now, in terms of the technocrats, uh, you know, Mr. Monty has a very good reputation, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, we're very well known in uh, uh, government circles and banking circles, central banking circles. Uh, 
one would have, you know one would keep your uh, you'd, you'd you'd want to be optimistic about him. Right. Uh, and he's highly regarded. Uh, but but this the overlay of the crisis it seems to me is quite negative. Uh, you know, it's interesting. There was a New York Times profile of Tim Geithner over the weekend, read that. and you read that. And um, you know, part of it was again reiterating how Geithner, you know, the moves that we made in the U.S. that were help, you know, led in, in many parts by Geithner was what helped us avoid a depression. And even though you had Geithner make several trips over to Europe to say, "Look, you've got to do the same thing there," it just did not resonate in Europe. Well, remember, uh, <laughs> they're the countries that have to make these the decisions. And we're in effect in an advisory capacity. Uh, we we can't command Betty that they do anything, uh, and so the idea that they didn't salute what Tim Geithner recommended recommended is not a surprising idea. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, but going to the to the origin of your question, I think history is going to uh, uh, render a very favorable verdict on the way America responded so forcefully and so overwhelmingly to the events of late 2008 and 2009, and history is not going to render a favorable verdict on the halting uh, and uh, uh, much slower timid. approach that, that, that Europe has, has taken. Roger, thank you. It's great to have you here in the studio. Always a pleasure, Betty. Always a pleasure to have you. Now, Roger Altman, the founder and chairman of Evercore Partners,